Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm on scene, Jim Lasanti, and we are together praying the third Sunday of Easter. Let's do that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And to better celebrate Mass, let's think about our lives and confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that Christ will give us a share in his glory by leading us to the joy of unending life. God, our loving Father, may we look forward with hope to our own personal resurrection. For you have made us your sons and daughters, and you have restored us to the joys of our youth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leader did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me, and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, 
bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiated for our sins, and not for our sins only, but those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and, and the truth is not them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God, is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open our scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you question? And the, why do those questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for their joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you got anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. And he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us on this third Sunday of Easter. And let's get right into the readings because they're great today. Let's go first to the Acts of the Apostles. You've got uh, the example being raised by the apostles of injustice in the world. And the example they use in particular is an innocent man, Jesus of Nazareth, is put to death while you, he's talking to his own people, St. Peter usually talking to the Jewish people, says to them, but there, you cried for Barabbas, who was a murderer. You took a guilty man who was sinful as could be, and you, you freed him, and yet you put this man who's pure goodness, namely Jesus, to death. And what St. Peter's doing in that passage is highlighting for us the seeming injustice of the world. Now, who of us has not had the same feeling? Where we look around the world and we see the bad guys seem to win and the good people get stepped on. You look even, for instance, now at a, a war in Ukraine and you say, why would the Russians need, in light of the fact that they have the largest country in the world and they are so powerful and so rich from their petroleum, why would they need to crush the people and slaughter the people of Ukraine for the sake of, of a piece of land? It's just wrong and it's evil. But I think we're being told in this particular reading that that's a lot of part of human history. 
is that what we consider to be just and right doesn't always happen in our lifetime. But the promise of this reading is that in the end, God makes everything right. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that the Barabbases of the world aren't going to be held accountable in this world, because he wasn't. But it does mean that when we come to the end of our lives and we stand before the judgment seat of God, those who have stayed faithful and good, those who may have been victims of injustice in this world, will know the fullness of justice in the world to come. And that is, I hope for you and for me, a source of great consolation. Because we do look around our world and we are so troubled by uh, victims so often suffering, while those who cause them pain seem to walk away scot-free. And it is unjust and it's wrong. Every bit as wrong as it was for Barabbas to walk while Jesus hung on the cross. And we're being taught by this particular lesson of the crucifixion of Jesus that justice is not assured in this world, nor should we be shocked when it doesn't happen, but that the final justice, the judgment of God, will in fact make right that which has been made wrong in our world, that there is a final justice and that there is a final judgment. So you may see people who seem to walk free and never get held accountable for their sinfulness, but the Lord promises us through this reading, the days of justice are coming, and the Lord will be a fair and just and merciful judge, but in the end, he will hold us accountable. Let's go to that second reading, okay? We go to the letter of John. Um, a couple of things I love in this. One is the whole notion that you and I, let's face it, with all the mistakes we've made in our lives, we need somebody to be on our side. And St. John specifically calls Jesus our advocate before his father. Now, I don't know if you've ever needed an advocate, whether it's uh, someone in medicine or someone in law, but an advocate is someone you know who can state your case, who can really try to the best of their ability to help you out when you really need help, when you are overwhelmed by life, that you have somebody who says, let me take it from here, let me help. And how incredibly great is it to know that our Lord himself is going to be your advocate and mine before the judgment seat of God. I think we have a few advocates. You often hear me say that Mary is our advocate, you know, to Jesus through Mary. You go to Mary, the mother of God, who is all understanding and all loving, and you say, hey, I need some help. And she advocates to her son for you and me. Well, in turn, Jesus advocates to the Father, and he advocates for you and me. So we have somebody who is our defender, who stands by us, who tries to give us hope, who explains who we are to the powers that be. What a wonderful advocate to have. If you've ever needed an advocate, you know how special and how precious it is to have someone truly on your side who can be your ally, your advocate. Okay, let's go to a second thing in the Gospel of St. John I wanted to highlight. Um, I know him, namely, namely Jesus. Some people think that they know him, but then the reading goes on to say, hold it. If you say that you know Jesus, that means you're also willing to live in the call of Jesus. So St. John is saying, but if you disobey the commands of God, then you really can't say, I identify with Jesus. I'm a Catholic Christian, that means I follow Christ. We can't really say we're followers of Christ if we're not following his commands. And this reading is a challenge to you and me to say, stop moving from lip service to action. So do I just say I'm a Catholic Christian? What does it mean for me in the practical order? How does it cause me to live my life in a good way? Am I someone who is truly committed to knowing Jesus Christ and in knowing him, living fully the teachings and the commands of our God? Because you can't have it both ways. I follow Jesus Christ, I'm a Catholic Christian, but I kind of go my own way. What we used to identify as being a cafeteria Catholic. I pick and choose. I like some stuff, I don't like other stuff. I follow what I like and I drop what I don't like. We're being told by St. John that to be one with Christ is to be one with Christ story that I'll share with you because it reminds me of what I'm saying. Um, when he was governor of New York, Governor Hugh Carey identified as pro-choice. And then once he was out of office, he started being someone who went around the country speaking for the pro-life cause. So when I interviewed him, I had to ask him the question, what happened? What made you change? And he said, the truth is, I've always known the teachings of the church and I've always known them to be right. He said, after all, Father, I am the father with Helen, my wife, of 10 babies. I know what's in the womb. I know why abortion is wrong, but my desire for office, my desire for power, my desire to be accepted by the larger culture made me for a while forget who I was as a Catholic Christian. And I realized as I get older and I have to face God, 
You can't have it both ways, Father. You can't say you know the truth as Jesus has taught us, but I'm going to walk in another direction for the acceptance of other people. And so before ending his life, he spent whatever time he had left to try to teach the truth that he'd always known, but he had separated it out. And you and I do the same thing, right? We know what God expects of us. We know his commands. We know the golden rule. We know what we're supposed to do. But we want to take a path that's a little easier for us. And what St. John is saying is not an easy message. You cannot separate out the identity as a follower of Christ, as a Catholic Christian, with the commands of our God to live as he wants us to live. You can't have it both ways. That's what St. John is saying. And then finally, let's go to this gospel, this gospel of St. Luke. Again, as I said to you last week, I love the fact that he walks into the presence of people who are imperfect like you and me. Last week, three times, today just once, but his first greeting is, peace be with you. He knows the darkest part of your heart and mine, and the first thing he says is not how bad we are, how awful are we, or how could you do this to me, how could you not be there when I needed you, but peace be with you. And it just should be for you and me a recognition that our God loves us always. And I know there are lots of people watching a Mass like this who say, yeah, you don't know what I've done, Father. You don't know some of the stuff in my history, but God does. And he's still looking you eyeball to eyeball says, even with a full awareness of your sinfulness and mine, peace be with you. But there's more in this gospel. Let's go to it. He asks us, he asks them, but he's asking you and me too, why are you troubled? Why are you so anxious? Why are you filled with worry? Don't you know that I'm here in your life? Don't you know I'm not going to let anything permanently damage or hurt you? I'm your advocate. Didn't you hear the second reading? I'm on your side. I love you. My love is unconditional. So when you give way to anxiety and fear and, and you're wondering what's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm so nervous, I'm so upset about the things happening in my life, he's asking you and me that question. Why are you so troubled? Don't you believe? Don't you trust? Don't you know how completely he's on our side? Because he is. So I'm, I'm talking to you right now, and there's not one of us that doesn't have fears, anxieties, worries. We're overwhelmed sometimes by our life and our situations, whether it's about money or health or relationships. And he's saying, would you give it to me? Would you stop being troubled? I'm God. I'm on your side. Relax. I know it's easier said than done, but it should cause us to pause and say, don't I believe? Don't I really believe? Because if I do, I should be able to give it to him and sit back and breathe again and trust again and give up my fear and anxiety. Why, he asks, are you troubled? And then I love finally in this gospel because it's just so cool. Jesus is God, but we should never forget he has that double identity. He's fully, fully human. And he wants to point out to his apostles and disciples that he's very much walking their journey, that he understands what it is to be human because he is human. And so what does he say? What do you say when you're around friends and family who you love? Hey, you got anything to eat? And what does Jesus say in this gospel? Have you anything to eat? He wants to show them that he's a human being very much like them. He's also God's son. He is God. But he, in that particular moment, needs for them to recognize he's not a ghost he has been raised from the dead and is fully human. And the fully human side of him says, hey, have you got anything to eat? That's what we do, don't we? We ask for food. We, we break bread with people we love. It's all part of being family. It's all part of being human. And in this particular passage, he's letting us know, I'm not a ghost. I'm one of you. I'm God, but I'm also fully human. And I can relate to every struggle you have because I have walked in your shoes. Finally, off the readings for a second, I've said this to you a few times in passing, but I want to be more specific. I'm always saying to you folks who come to our Mass from around the country and around the world, just consider Our Lady of Lourdes your spiritual home online, but some of you once in a while have the privilege of coming to New York, and I say, and I mean it, I hope you'll come and visit us in person, but I want to show you where you're visiting. Don't go away. First of all, this is a recent picture taken by our friend, Father Andy, one of the best recent spring days that we had. And it's the outside of Our Lady of Lourdes. And you'll see our beautiful church, and then you see the grotto dedicated to Our Lady of Lourdes and St. Bernadette. And you even have then in the corner picture here, a small garden we have with a statue of St. Anthony. But our whole 
campus, if you will, is a place to come and pray and relax in the presence of the Lord and be among his people. It's a beautiful parish where you, my friends who watch at home, are always, always welcome to join us. And when you come, don't be afraid to say to Father Andy or Father Kevin or Father Anthony or me, hey, I've been watching you online for a while and I've always wanted to come to Our Lady Lord's. Well, you're always welcome, but that's not all. Okay, and then you come inside this beautiful church, and the church is truly beautiful. It's got a modern taste, but it's also very reverential. It's a great place to come and to pray, and it's a beautiful altar, and it's a beautiful church. But the great beauty of our churches, as we found out during the pandemic, is not the physical building, beautiful as it is. In the end, it's about the people of God. And one of the saddest things for me as a priest, for all of us, was to go through those years of the pandemic and to have this church, this beautiful church, missing the core element of our parish community, the people who make up the parish. So here you have a Sunday Mass, and as you can see, every seat is filled and there are people standing, because happily, thanks be to God, people have, after the pandemic, come home to Christ, come home to their parish, and are praying together and receiving the communion together. It's a great thing. So this is Our Lady of Lourdes on a typical Sunday. This is Our Lady of Lourdes on the outside. And this is your spiritual home away from your spiritual home. I know you have your own parish, but just know this is your other parish. This is the parish, as I say, without boundaries, where you, my friends, are always, always welcome. As a people of faith, please join me in saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And trusting in the goodness of God and knowing he's never going to let anything bad happen to us, we now turn to the Lord with our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer for the church throughout the world, that through her teachings and witnesses, we may embrace the truth of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and all who preach the gospel, for all who hear their message around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the witness of the parish community to the risen Christ may echo into their neighborhoods, schools, work, workplaces, inviting others to believe the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those students in our religious education program who received the sacrament of confirmation on Tuesday, that they will live their promise to follow Jesus with the guidance of the Holy Spirit throughout their life's journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish, and family members who are ill and enjoy the consolation of the Lord's and the presence of their loved ones especially. Paulette Sewell, babies Carmel and Liliana are known, Christopher Weber, Leanne Lisante, Jeanette Savino, Peggy Folan, Bruce Olier, Francis and Nello Bonamico, Jill and Anna Renda, um, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Valentine Belosi, Marie Tyne, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, James S. Brovosky, 
Jean and Dick Olson, St. Joseph Book of Remembrance, Madeline Altima, Catherine Lower, Intention of Ed White, Isadora Gonzalez Bacani, Father Tony Heint Liam, and Rocco Santa Padre, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me add a few intentions for those who are sick. I want to pray for my friend Diane Nagel down in the Carolinas, who has undergone some special surgery, and for her well-being and return to good health. Among the sick, I also pray for Jose Josena. I pray for Glenn Hudson, for Joe Falgiano, for Bertica of Seattle and her daughter as well, for Tom Slade and Kathy Bordingo, for Judge Anthony Falanga, for Eddie Mullins, and for Mary O'Brien, for Tommy Burke, my classmate and friend, for Tom and Patty Yanch, also classmates and friends. I pray for Katie O'Connor, I pray for Angelo and Al Clementi, for Leanne Lasanti, for Kimberly Cusack, for Christine Bauman. I pray for Michelle Leonhart and Russell Castro Giovanni, for Vincent Rienza Jr., as well as uh, for Roy Citrano and Sam Maggio. I pray for Susie and Vinnie Vignardi and their families. I pray for Richard Monaco. I pray as well for Herb Stadler and Judy Alaco and Larry Mayer. I pray for Richard Carbone. I pray for Janet Chevelle, Robert Talaska, Thomas Mistretta. Uh, I pray as well for Michael Hellam and uh, Carmela, Catherine, and Liliana, the twins who have been sick. I pray for Michael, who's been battling leukemia. I pray for uh, Sandra Slater and for Anne Marie de Blasio and Linda Madrigo and Dario Rivera. And I was praying for so long for Michael Chanover, and I heard this week that he has gone to God. I pray for Carol M. Uh, Carol Paolo Oshandi, for Kelly Lee Scibilia, and for Virginia Rivera. For Barbara and Ken Barsanti, Mary and Ken Johnson and family, Tommy Swingross. I pray for Sarah Belfi and Gus, I pray as well. Gus, you also went to God. I pray for Paulette Sewell and Terry and John Schiara and Maria and Bob Cariola. Pray for Melissa Olberg and Sal Manzo and Larry Lewis. I pray for the Parentine family and the McShay family as well. And for Valio Bronzini. Pray for Jack Campbell as well as Mrs. Kalinowski and Linda and Frank Rosado. Among the sick, I pray as well for Ben Samanella, as well as George Rumi, and for Ralph as well. I want to pray, adding to the list of those who are sick, I pray too for uh, Howie Pomerantz, my friend Howie, uh, Josephine Romano. I pray for Rita Padden. I pray for uh, Richard Arturo. I pray as well for uh, Valerie Milderberger and her continued recovery. My friend Frank Savino, I pray too for Vinnie Rissuti. I just had a chance to visit Vinnie this week in the nursing home. I pray too for uh, Leanne Lasanti again. And also among the sick, let me pray for Melanie Jandovitz as well as Josephine Romano. And then I want to pray for those who have passed away. So let me mention them now. Richard Jennings, Craig Scott, Bessie and TC Center, Thomas Minter, Roland Rossi, I pray for Jenna Tuller, Margie Smith, Tessie Palmo. I pray for Phil Cordero and Frank Cazetto. I pray for Isabella Glauda, Billy and Michael Sarasoli and their father, Billy Sarasoli. I pray for Ray and Monica Carrison. I pray for Margaret O'Connor Lasanti and Bridget Clementi, especially on this, the one year anniversary of Bridget's passing, a great old friend who first made me welcome in her home along with Angelo when I was a newly ordained priest. As always, I pray for my mom, Cecilia Nicholas Losanti. I pray for Irene and Tom Romano, for Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz, and for Beverly Maggio. I pray too for Regina Brighton, Justino Amarin. I pray for Tom Sully O'Sullivan and Alfred John Sicali. I pray for Emilio Olaco and Paul Struzzieri and Maria and Albert Cavelli, for Anna and Gary Gooms, for all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, for Diana Mistretta, as well as James and Rita Volpe. I pray for Joseph Sardone, for Gina Pelletier, for Emily Lafaso. I pray for um, Jim Bobrowski, as well as Chris Baumler. I pray for Betty Moore and Pauline Romano and Sylvia Christ, as well as Beatrice Ferrari. I pray for Millie Paradiso and Mary Rockensees, for James C. Williams, 
as well as Suzanne Scanio and Brian Hussey, her dad. For Annette Salintro and Judge Donald Belfi and Thomas Peter Lopresti. For Joseph Walweber and Dennis and Joe Cooney. For Richard Jennings and Jamie Scotto and Pam Amadeo, as well as Gina Pelletier, Beatrice Ferrari, Chris Baumler once again. I pray for Pauline McKenzie's parents, as well as Jeanette Chanover and Rosalie Salco, and for Gussie Sino. Let me pray for Sino. I want to pray for John, Helen, and Luke Marr. And let me add a few more names, if I can, to that list, if you'll bear with me and be patient with the old Monsignor. Hmm. It was just in my hands. Come on. I think you better put that on hold, folks. Okay, I got it. Among those who I'm also praying for who passed away, I want to remember Marie Tenet, a beautiful soul from our parish, much loved by many, who went home to God last night. I pray for Marianne and Franco Alfonso. Uh, I pray as well for Michael Manzella and for Emily Lafaso and all the members of the Emilo family, Sal, Angelo, Guy, and Gaetano. I pray too for uh, Nick Martone, uh, as well as for... Um, Jonathan Diller, the police officer, now detective, who passed away recently, a victim of violence in New York City. I pray for, pray for Glenn Mankin, as well as for Dick Rosmarin, and I pray for all the people we love who pass from this life to the next. Let's pray, too, for justice in this world as well as in the next. So I pray for our friends in Ukraine and for their safety. I pray for our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong and for an end to all violence in the Holy Land. I pray for our first responders, police, firefighters, and EMTs, as well as all of our men and women in the armed forces, and our doctors, nurses, orderlies, and those keeping us healthy. I pray, too, for your special intentions in mind, and we give them all over to our patroness, the Mother of God, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let me add one more intention for a woman who has died and who I loved, Elvira C. Vaccaro. Elvira, we pray for you in heaven. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, receive these gifts from your church and may the great joy you give us come to perfection in the kingdom of heaven. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever during this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to reveal his faithful people to the kingdom. His death is our ransom from death, his resurrection is our rising to everlasting life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven 
and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness, all your, all your actions show your wisdom and your love. You formed us in your own likeness and you set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and to rule over all creatures. And even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped all people to seek and to find you. Again and again, you taught us through the prophets to hope for salvation. Father, you so love the world that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To those in sorrow, joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He always loved those who were his own in the world. And when the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of that love. While they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming again in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice, which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice, which you've given to your church and by your Holy Spirit, gather all who receive this bread and wine into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the apostles and martyrs and saints. Then, in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature, through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, 
forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Who participating in this Mass doesn't have anxiety and worries and fears? And what does the gospel say? Jesus says, what are you troubled about? I'm on your side. For the courage and the faith to believe that with God on our side, everything is possible. Let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. I am regularly catching up with special intentions, and I have one here. Please add George and Joan Scognamilio uh, to your prayer list. So George and Joan, we're keeping them in prayers. I also want to take a moment. We had a visit this week from 
uh, Bishop John Barris, how the Assistant Bishop for the Confirmandi, those who receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. And it's always important to thank all the people who work in religious education under Donald Kess Donna Kesselman and all those catechists who've been working so hard to train the young people who have now been confirmed in their faith. They receive the sacraments of initiation. This is the final sacrament of initiation, so it's baptism, communion, and now confirmation, hopefully sending them on their way to live the faith, not just to see themselves as nominal Catholic Christians, but again, going back to the gospel message, to live it, not just to say it. And so we congratulate them and we thank all their teachers and their parents and their grandparents and all the people who brought them to their religious education. And we congratulate them on their confirmation. Um, I always like to invite you, if you can, to join us on Personally Speaking. As I mentioned, this week our guest is Scott Hamilton, the gold Olympic medal winner for his ice skating, but more importantly, an amazing man of faith, four times a survivor of cancer, as well as someone who was himself adopted and then went on to adopt two children of his own with his wife, along with their own sons that they had uh, uh, through their marriage. So they have four children in all. Great story, great man, wonderful testimony to faith and hope. That's Scott Hamilton on Personally Speaking. And then next week is Adam Jacobs. I saw Adam on Broadway when he starred for a thousand performances as Aladdin in the uh, Disney musical Aladdin, and now he's starring in The Who's Tommy, the rock opera that's now on Broadway. Wonderful guy, the uh, father of twin sons, and uh, just a, a great guy. Interesting background that is both Philippine Catholic as well as Jewish. So next week is Adam Jacobs, a wonderful actor. And as always, I tell you about Personally Speaking is on Sirius XM, channel 129, the Catholic channel. So you can listen to it if you want. It's on three times on Sunday. Or just go to your computer and write in uh, Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti on YouTube. And you can watch our program. But either way, these are great interviews with people of faith, and I'd love for you to see them. My friends, let's continue to pray. Lord God, look upon your people always with kindness, and by these Easter mysteries, bring us to the, glo the glory of the resurrection. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your and may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. See